Hi everyone, welcome back to VRC Smart Edu channel. Actually, uh, we have covered the part 1 where we have discussed about the classification of haloalkanes and what are haloalkanes and we also discussed about the various nomenclature how to name certain compounds. So, in today's video, this is going to be the part 2 video of this chapter. So, before that, if you have not subscribed our channel, kindly subscribe it. It will encourage us for making more videos. And if you have not liked, click that like button. Then we will go to the video. Now, this is a part 2 of haloalkanes and haloarenes. So, in this part, we are going to discuss about the nature of CX bond and preparation. Various preparation of haloalkanes alone. Okay, preparation methods of alkanes we will discuss. Okay, it's going to be really interesting concept. So, listen carefully. Okay, so before wasting time, let's get into the video. Before that, if you have not watched my previous session, the links are provided in the description. As well as the link will be popping up here. You can watch it from here. Clear? Yes. Now, let's move on to today's concept. Okay. So, for haloalkane, whenever you write the uh, IUPAC name and common name, one important thing to be followed. So, I am writing the IUPAC name and common name. So, when you write the common name, you should write it as alkyl halide. Alkyl halide. That is, your alkyl group should be coming at the first and halide. Propyl chloride. In that way you will write for the common name. If it is going to be the hypac name, you will write it in the form of haloalkane. This is the important thing you can note it down. Clear? This is the important thing you can note it down. Okay. So, now let's move to the next. Next is nothing but nature of CX bond. That is carbon and halogen bond. Carbon and halogen bond. So CX bond. So the nature of CX bond, whenever you talk about the nature of CX bond, what you can say about the nature of CX bond? Always your carbon will be there. And to your carbon, one area halogen will be attached and other two, other three with any other atom, hydrogen or now, your X atom, your halogen atom will be negatively charged and your carbon will be positively charged here. So, since your halogen atom is going to be negatively charged and your carbon is going to be positively charged, this is called as a nucleophile. Okay, nucleophile. This is nucleophilic center. This is electrophilic center. This is nucleophilic. This is electrophilic. So, nucleophilic already you know what is nucleophilic center and electrophilic center. Right. So, nucleophiles. So, actually electrophiles. Your carbon will act as an electrophile. Okay, so what happens? Electronegative. So your halogen atom will be electronegative. So what happens? The bond is getting polarized. So the bond is getting polarized and the bond is getting attached. The bond is getting attached. So the bond length, how the bond length will be? Here is another one question that is arising. How the bond length will be. We'll just to see here. So, as the size of the halogen atom increases, as the size of the halogen atom increases, what happens? The bond length also increases. Right? So, you can able to see that. So, your fluorine is the smallest atom. So, from fluorine you will have fluorine is the smallest atom. Then chlorine, bromine, Iodine. So, iodine is the biggest atom. So, fluorine is the smallest atom and iodine is the biggest atom. 
right so when you go in that way okay so carbon halogen bond will also increase okay so carbon halogen bond this bond carbon halogen bond will increase when bond length will increase clear so typically bond length bond enthalpy dipole moment these all also clear so that is fluorine with carbon you will be having or carbon fluorine you will be having carbon bromine you will be having so this is the smallest atom and this is the largest atom so from cf to ci what happens the bond length also increases uh, the carbon halogen bond length will increase as the carbon that is the atom increases the length of the bonding will also this the distance between them will increase clear so that is about the nature of the cx bond so uh, now we are going to see the preparation of halo alkenes this is the next concept so in preparation of halo alkenes we can prepare the halo alkenes by four different types we can prepare the halo alkenes by four different types so see the first type is by alcohols that is from alcohols second type is from hydrocarbons and third type is from alkenes and fourth type is from halogen exchange reaction so from alcohols there is no division under it but you have six techniques six techniques six different techniques to find from alcohols you know what is alcohols okay where oh group will be attached that is called as alcohols right oh group will be attached that is called as alcohol so there are six different types of techniques through which you can prepare the halo alkenes from alcohols from hydrocarbons if you have to prepare there are three different types to prepare from hydrocarbons the first type is free radical chlorination okay free radical chlorination electrophilic substitution reaction then third one is sand meyers reaction okay then from alkenes alkenes in the sense what which having which is having the double bond right double bond next uh, from alkenes there is no subdivision over that then from allergen exchange reaction so under allergen exchange reaction we have two reaction one is going to be the finkelstein reaction another one is going to be the schwartz reaction so here listen carefully one more information i'm giving you here the sand meyers reaction finkelstein reaction and the schwartz reaction all these three reactions are there no these three reactions are nothing but name reactions name reactions so they will ask you to write uh, name any two name reactions and explain it so like this type of question you can write so your name reactions are sand meyers name uh, sand meyers reaction finkelstein reaction and schwartz reaction are name reaction so actually in this lesson we are going to learn uh, uh, eight seven to eight name reactions we will be learning in this lesson okay all the seven to eight name reactions are very very important to remember because most of the questions are asked from these name reactions okay so here itself we studied three name reaction we are going to see three name reaction be more clear with this name reaction give more importance to this name reaction clear okay so in later part of the chapter we will learn the rest of the name reaction um, you can take a separate note and you can just note it down all the name reactions put the topic halo alkenes and aluminiums put the topic name reaction and write all those name reactions and keep it okay so while revising it will be helpful for you and easy for you now let us start with preparation from alcohols okay preparation from alcohols how to prepare halo alkenes from alcohols i told there are how many techniques there are six techniques to prepare so first technique i am going to show you here first technique for this first technique what we are going to use is we are going to use lucas reagent we are going to use 
Lucas reagent. What is Lucas reagent? Let's see. See here. I'll write here about the Lucas reagent. Lucas reagent. So when you talk about Lucas reagent, it's nothing but it is concentrated HCl plus concentrated HCl plus ZnCl2 zinc chloride. When you add these two things, you will get Lucas reagent. Clear? So in first technique, we are going to use the Lucas reagent. So first what I am going to do is, I am going to take the alcohol. Alcohol ROH. R is nothing but an alkane. To an alkane, if OH is attached, then it is alcohol. right? So alkane, we are attaching OH. This is an alcohol. Taking the alcohol and adding it with HCl. I told concentrated HCl in the presence of ZnCl2 that is zinc chloride. I am using the Lucas reagent here. What I will get? Here if you just see means what happens? This um, clearly observe here. This OH and this H. This OH and this H will go out as H2O water. This OH and H will go out as H2O. Okay. Now what is remaining? R and Cl is remaining. So it will come out as RCl. Okay. This is just helping to react. That's all. It's like a catalyst. That's all. Okay. Not involved in the reaction. It will make the reaction to happen. That's it. Okay. So this OH and H will come out as H2O. And this R and Cl will come out as RCl. Clear? Easy only now. You can easily remember this reaction. Then second reaction. This is also easy only. Listen carefully. See you have ROH. Again we are taking the alcohol. Okay. And we are allowing to react with PX3. Allowing to react with PX3. Already I told what is your X? What is your X? Your X is nothing but chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine and fluorine. These are going to be your X. So I am using PX3. Okay. So anyway, anything you can use here. Okay. So while I am using PX3, what happens is, you just listen carefully. What is the product you are going to get? It is going to be a little bit uh, tricky. Okay. So, now listen carefully, this OH is there, OH is there and here PX3 is there but here you can't read with any of the, like this, you cannot read with any of the shortcuts, here you have to use it. See, listen here, this R and X3 will go out, R and X3 will go as RX and you have to balance it with 3. Okay, plus here you have to get the product as H3PO3. You will get the product H3PO3. This is a product you will get. Clear? So, this product is nothing but orthopospurous acid. Orthopospurous acid. This is the name of this product. Okay, now let's see the third one. So third one, just look here. Here also we are going to take ROH. But here we are going to take PX5. Instead of PX3, we are taking PX5. Okay. So when we are taking PX5, what happens? Here also you will get the product RX is one of the product. Plus your second product will be. So your second product will be. POX3 and your third product will be HX. Okay, here your POX3 is nothing but phosphorus oxy trihalide. We call it as phosphorus oxy trihalide because three halogen is there, right? So phosphorus oxy trihalide. These two uh, reactions you should and you must uh, read, okay? It is, there is no shortcut for this, but 
initially for the first one we saw there is a shortcut you can remember it like this this will two will go out okay but for this next to do you have to buy hard okay no problem you can do that so i told what i told for the second one r x will come out and h3 po 3 will come out here r x will be there po x3 plus h x will come out now the fourth reaction look carefully here also we have r o h plus r o h plus we are going to take n a b r n a b r we are going to take and we are going to take h2 so4 sulfuric acid okay sodium bromide and sulfuric acid and alcohol this three we are going to take when we react this three what we are going to get as a product okay listen here carefully this is also easy i will tell you how to do this okay so listen here okay if you see here carefully you can say that na plus br minus this is one of the clue and h2so4 will be broken down into h plus and hso4 minus how it will break it will break into two h plus and hso4 minus and roh will be r plus and oh minus now how it will join together now if you see r is plus r is plus and br i'll show it with different color so that you can able to easily understand it r is plus and br is minus so it will go out as r br go out as r br easy right next next i'll tell please and carefully next if you just look after here Na plus HSO four minus that will go out as Na HSO four minus Na HSO four minus clear plus you see HSO four is gone R is gone Br Na this complete compound is over your R is over now H plus and OH minus. So if H plus and this OH minus is this OH minus and this H plus if it's reacting together you will get H two O. So that is our final product. It is going to be H two O. Clear? Yes. Now fifth one, fifth one is very very simple. I'm going to take R O H. R O H is going to be reacting in the presence of red. Px two then your x is nothing but chlorine bromine already I wrote here okay iodine and fluorine okay now what you will get as your product nothing but r x this will be your product simply are getting al alkene. Okay. Now, six to one. Six to one. I am going to take ROH, and I am going to take SOCl two. What is your SOCl two? SOCl two is thionyl chloride. Okay. So question is asked based on this thionyl chloride. So very important. Listen carefully. Thionyl chloride. Okay, thionyl chloride. Now, what happens when ROH is reacted with thionyl chloride? Okay, and they will ask, what is the easiest method to prepare alkene from alcohol? The easiest method is the preparation with thionyl chloride. Why it is the easiest method? They will ask the question. I will write the uh, answer here. I will write the. reactants uh, we have wrote i'll write the product based on the product only we are saying that it is a easiest reaction and is a most preferable reaction to prepare allo alkene okay see roh soc2 now r 
this R and the Cl will be going out as RCl. One Cl and R will be going as RCl. Okay. Plus SO2 will be going out as gas. Evolving it as gas. Plus the Cl. One of the Cl is remaining and here one of the H is remaining. So that will go out as HCl. HCl will also be liberated. Evolved. So when these two are evolved, only your R, uh, RCl is left over. That is your allo alkane is alone left. All others are evaporated. That means you will get only the single product. So it is a most preferable reaction you can say. Clear? Hope you got that. So these are the reactions from alcohol. Very important. So what is the name of this? It is ortho. Ortho. Phosphorus as acid. This what is the name for this? Phosphorus oxy trihalide. Phosphorus oxy Trihalide. Clear? Now. So now we are going to look after from hydrocarbon. So under from hydrocarbon you have three subdivisions. You all know very well. Right? You have three subdivisions. Uh, that is one from free radical chlorination, electrophilic substitution reaction and uh, you also have sand maize reaction. Now, first we are going to see free radical chlorination. For free radical chlorination, I am going to take an alkane. Here I am going to take the butane for example. Okay, butane. What is your butane? CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. This is your butane. To the butane, I am going to add chlorine, Cl2. Okay, in the presence of, one second. In the presence of uh, H nu slash UV uh, light or UV radiation or UV light, you will get, what you will get is, you will get two different types of products based on the attachment of Cl2. Two different types of products you will get. One of the product is going to be the Cl is going to attach to the terminal position. Okay, that is, I'll write it in another color. That is, CH3, CH2, 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 Cl. This is one of the product. Plus, you may also get another product where your Cl can be attached to the CH3, CH2, CH, Cl, CH3. So if the same is attached to this side also same. So two different types of products you can get in the free radical chlorination. Right. Okay. Now moving on to electrophilic substitution reaction. In electrophilic substitution reaction first I am going to take the tolin. Okay. Tolin. What is tolin? Tolin is nothing but CH3 attached with benzene ring is tolin. So this is your. Now to this I am going to add Cl2. To this I am going to add Cl2 or you can write it as X2. That is your wish. So I am going to add your Cl2. Under the presence of Fe that is iron in the dark condition. In the dark condition, you are going to get the benzene ring. You are going to get the benzene ring with CH3 and this chlorine no one Cl will be attached here. So if the Cl is attached here, this is the minor product. This is the minor product. Plus, you may also get the benzene ring. Attached with CH3 
and here attached with x this will be your major product this will be your major product clear next moving on to sand mayer's reaction so sand mayer's reaction is nothing but it is a conversion of it is a conversion of aniline to chlorobenzene aniline to chlorobenzene okay so how to do this how to convert aniline to chlorobenzene okay now listen carefully and uh, first we are going to take the aniline in sand mayer's reaction okay so first we are supposed to take the aniline aniline is nothing but benzene attached with nh2 is nothing but aniline so what now we are going to do is aniline we are going to have it in the presence of any no2 plus hx that is x you already know what is x x can be chlorine bromine iodine or fluorine okay x 0 degree celsius in kelvin if you have to write it it will be from 273 to 278 kelvin so under this temperature you will get two different types of products so only one product you will get first okay just see you are going to get one product where your nh2 is there no this n2 this x will be replaced there okay see n2 x will be replaced because hx we are adding so x will be replaced this is called as benzene benzene diazonium halide diazonium halide okay with this with this when you are going to react when you are going to react okay we are reacting cu2 x2 okay cu2 x2 okay we will be getting the benzene ring this is a catalyst this is a catalyst okay so how we wrote here the similarly this is also a catalyst here with x you will get okay so this is nothing but this is your haloarene haloarene which is the liberation of n2 gas with the liberation of n2 gas n2 gas will be liberated out clear this is your sand mayer's reaction and this is a very very important reaction i told it is a one of the named reaction it is one of the named reaction so it is very important to remember clear right now moving on to the next so next is from alkenes alkenes i already told it is nothing but double bonded compound okay alkenes are double bonded compounds so now let us start to do how to prepare from alkenes so first okay first we are going to take an alkene okay ch2 ch2 this is the alkene i am going to take i am allowing it to react with br or hbr okay hbr what is this reaction actually this is you have studied in your previous class what is the thing you have studied that is for unsymmetrical alkene you studied this is for this is symmetrical alkene so you can easily do for symmetrical alkene only one way of attaching br how you can attach the br ch3 ch2 br you will get that is one bond will be removed from double bond and it will be made into single bond and one h will be going and attaching to one carbon and one br will be going and attaching to the another carbon wherever you attach the br is same because See, it is a symmetric carbon compound, so no problem. But if it is going to be a unsymmetric carbon compound, for example, I am going to take propene here. Okay, propene CH three CH CH two. 
where it is allowed to react with HBr. Okay, and it is allowed to react with HBr in the absence of peroxide. So, absence of peroxide. So, what is the reaction is called as? So, this is nothing but this uh, Marconikov's rule. We have already studied in the absence of peroxide. When HBr is allowed to react with an unsymmetrical alkane in the absence of peroxide, it is Marconikov's rule. So, according to Marconikov's rule, you will get two different types of product. How your product will be formed? One of the product is CH3, CH2, CH2, CH2. Br. This is first product and another one product will also be formed that will be CH3, CHBr, CH3. This is the second product formed. So the first product formed will be the minor product. Why? Because according to the rule the negative part of HBr, that is Br is a negative part, that will be getting attached to the carbon containing less number of hydrogen. That means this is only less number of hydrogen. Then this will be your major product. And this will be your minor product. Okay. So this is Marconikov's rule. Next we are going for the next. So B. Okay. Your next reaction B1. You are taking CH2, CH2, the same symmetrical alkane, and it is going to be reacting with Br in the presence of CCl4. While it is reacting with Br in Br2 in the presence of CCl4, Br2, Br2 will be broken into Br, Br, and one of the Br will be going attached to this car carbon, and another Br will be attached to this carbon, and it will be forming this product. Clear? Okay. Now, I am moving to the next halogen exchange reaction. According to halogen exchange reaction, we have two different types of halogen exchange reaction where I told both of them are important because both of them are what? Both of them are name reactions. So, very, very important. So, Finkelstein reaction and Swartz reaction. So, what is all about Finkelstein reaction? See, in Finkelstein reaction, what we are going to take is, we are going to take an Rx. What is Rx? Rx is al alloalkane, right? So, it is going to react with Nai. Nai. In the presence of dry acetone. In the presence of dry acetone. What happens is, this two R that is Na and X will be coming out as NaX, NaX and Ri will be coming out as Ri. Clear? Okay. This is very simple, right? So, this is Finkelstein reaction. Next, we are moving on to Swartz reaction. For Swartz reaction, you can use uh, the catalyst. These are, okay. You can use COF2, you can use Ag2F2, you can use SBF3 and you can use AGF. Okay, so now I am going to use AGF and I am going to show you the reaction. Rx when is allowed to react with AGF, what you will get? Okay, what you will get? See, listen here. This X and this AG will be going out as AGX. As AGX. And this R, okay, and this F will be going out as R. Clear? So that's all. So that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you like this video, kindly like it and subscribe the channel for more videos. If you have not watched the previous session, as I said earlier, the links are provided in the description. You can go and watch that videos. So, thank you so much. I will be coming up with the next video. Thank you.